Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the press conference of the summit of heads of state and government of the Eurozone. Without further delay, I will give the floor successively to the President of the European Council, Mr. Herman Van Rompuy, secondly, to the President of the European Commission, Mr. Barroso, and finally, to the Prime Minister of Greece, Mr. Papandreou. President Van Rompuy, you have the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, I'm glad to announce that we found a common response to the crisis situation. Our meeting was focused on European leaders defending the financial stability of the euro area. Today we reached three important decisions, fully supported by all of us. We improved the Greek debt sustainability. We took measures to stop the risk of contagion. And finally, we committed to improve the Eurozone's crisis management. I convinced this summit of heads of state or government of the Eurozone because the situation was really grave. I equally invited, alongside with the President of the European Central Bank, the Managing Director of the IMF, Madame Lagarde, to take part in the work. The problems the euro area is facing could only be solved at the highest level. We had to act quickly. Convening this meeting focused the minds and accelerated finding a solution. I could not allow a difficult situation to become a dangerous one. From a series of national debt crises, the situation was evolving into a systemic concern threatening the stability of the Eurozone as a whole. This threat had to be contained, otherwise the situation could have led to a serious loss of confidence in our common currency and could even have jeopardized the ongoing economic recovery in Europe and in the world. And that's why today we tackled the problem by addressing two main factors. Investors fears that losses will be imposed on a non-voluntarily basis on bondholders in Greece and then maybe in other countries as well. And second fear, market uncertainty over the Eurozone's ability to resolve the crisis. Let me comment today's decisions more in detail. Firstly, we offer a solution to the Greek debt problem. We reached agreement on a new assistance program to fully cover the financing gap and to be financed by both the European Union and the IMF. Two other very important steps are the agreement to reduce the interest rates for the future loans and to lengthen the maturities to a minimum of 15 years and up to 30 years. The banks have today also committed to support Greece on a voluntary basis through a menu of options. Importantly, we have changed the approach of PSI, public sector involvement, Private sector involvement will be limited to Greece and Greece only. This is a strong package. And secondly, we agreed on a series of measures to stop contagion. To start, we stated clearly that the Greek situation is different from that of other countries. And that's why it requires an exceptional response, including as regards the participation of the private sector. In addition, the financial stability facility will get more flexibility to intervene. Precautionary assistance, recapitalization of banks through governments, including in non-program countries, and secondary market interventions in exceptional circumstances on the basis of an analysis by the European Central Bank. So if you want, we created a solid firewall and better fire brigade equipment. And thirdly, we decided to improve the Eurozone's governance while dealing with the short term, we do not forget the long term. And let me mention two points in particular. We agree that reliance of our own rules on external credit rating agencies should be reduced. And furthermore, we have received a mandate to make concrete proposals on how to better organize crisis management in the euro area and to improve working methods. 
and I will work in close consultation with the President of the Eurogroup and the President of the European Commission and present proposals in October. Today, ladies and gentlemen, with all these decisions, we have shown that we will not waver in the defense of our monetary union and our common currency. A final remark, when European leaders say that we will do everything what is required to save the Eurozone, it is very simple. We mean it. Thank you. Thank you. President Barroso, please, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you will see the very ambitious package that we have just adopted. Let me, first of all, inform you that uh, tomorrow uh, there will be a technical briefing in the Commission, in uh, at 1 o'clock, 1 p.m. So I'm not going now in details. Following the presentation made now by the President of the European Council, let me highlight what I believe are the most important political aspects. First of all, I think it is for the first time since the beginning of this crisis that we can say the politics and the markets are coming together. Yesterday, I made a statement where I said we had 24 hours to respond to a very serious situation that puts at risk the financial stability in the Eurozone. And I said that the minimum we needed to do was provide clarity on five central issues. Not only this has been achieved, we have now a very credible package. Firstly, measures to substantially improve the sustainability of Greek public finances. The lowering of interest rates and extension of maturities are an essential element in this respect. This is true both for public support and private sector involvement. This, of course, requires full implementation of the Greek macroeconomic adjustment program. It is, of course, a two-way street. Prime Minister Papandreou gave in very clear terms his assurances in this respect. Second, the feasibility and limits of private sector involvement. We now are clear about what we mean by PSI and to whom it applies. It is a voluntary approach by the private sector, and it is therefore a solution with the markets, not against them. Importantly, we are crystal clear that PSI is for Greece and Greece alone. It is an exceptional solution which we exclude for others. It's a unique solution. Thirdly, scope for more flexible action through the European Financial Stability Facility. We have agreed an ambitious reform of the EFSF, making it more flexible and effective as we had asked back in January in the 2011 Commission Annual Growth Survey. We are lowering the lending rates, extending the maturities, and allowing it to do more, including intervention on the secondary markets, apart from intervention with a precautionary nature. This means that we will be in a position to act whenever damage threatens, unlike before, when we needed to wait for substantial damage to occur before we could intervene. Firstly, repair of the banking sector still needed. The second youth wide stress test was published on the 15th of July. It revealed remaining pockets of vulnerability in the European banking system. We give the markets a credible commitment to recapitalize those banks which have failed or nearly failed the test. Fifthly, measures to ensure the provision of liquidity to our banking system. There can be no comprehensive solution to the sovereign crisis without the full support of the European Central Bank and the euro system, and we had this today. I also made clear that we needed to boost the chances of growth in Greece. Heads of state and government have welcomed the Commission's decision to create a task force for Greece, to provide technical assistance to help Greece implement its reforms and mobilize and better target structural funds. This, together with the program for Greece, is what we have referred to in the meeting as a European kind of Marshall Plan, where we will ask member states and the European Investment Bank to give a contribution. I also called for a clear and equivocal signal that the Council will conclude the economic governance package with the European Parliament. Today, we had this. All member states of the euro area said they will 
come to an agreement with the Parliament, and I'm particularly pleased that the final deal will be, in fact, extremely close to the original Commission proposal. Finally, we also endorsed the line of reducing over-reliance on external credit ratings. As you know, just yesterday, the Commission presented a first step in that direction, and will come forward in the autumn with further proposals. So, ladies and gentlemen, we needed a credible package. We have a credible package. It deals with both the concerns of the markets and of citizens. It responds also to the concerns of all member states of the euro area. It is a package that every government has signed up to. For the first time, the crisis, politics and markets are coming together. Now I expect every one of them to go out and defend and implement with determination this package. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister Papandre. You have the floor. Thank you very much. I'd like to welcome the support and the collective will that we have shown here in Europe, uh, all the institutions and the member states support for a new Greek program, but also support for the necessary tools for managing a crisis in the most effective way. I'd also like to say that uh, we now have a program and a package of decisions which create a sustainable path for Greece, a sustainable debt management for Greece, and uh, this, in the end, of course, will mean not only the funding of a program, but it will also mean the lightening of the burden on the Greek people. And the Greek people are a proud people. We are a proud people. We are a creative and industrious people. And the only thing we are asking for is the right to make major changes in our country, profound, deep changes in our country. And we are committed to implement this program for these changes, to make our country a viable one, a just country and society, one of growth and job creation. And this is why I also welcome the decision to launch a program of growth, a program which will be also supported technically by the Commission with a new task force with which the President of the Commission has created, and I thank him for that, and uh, at the same time mobilize all the institutions and funds in this direction for, as uh, what uh, José Manuel said, a European type of a Marshall Plan, a Greek plan for growth. Uh, this decision, which um, we also took, gives a clear signal. And Herman, I think this is also very important, you mentioned this, uh, that um, there's a very strong message of support to the banking system, not only the European banking system, but also the Greek banking system. And uh, this is for financing, for liquidity, for capitalization, in the end, strengthening the Greek banking system. Finally, this is uh, a European success, a European package. It's not only a Greek response, not only a response from Greece or for Greece, but it's a European response for Europe so that we realize, each of our peoples realize the potential we have. Uh, that is what we want to do in Greece, but also we realize the potential as Europeans. Thank you. Thank you. There is uh, room for a few number of questions. Please identify yourself and the media you represent. Uh, Simon Kennedy from Bloomberg News. Um, uh, a technical question. In this section on, on secondary market buying, it, it seems to the reader that uh, you're actually replacing the ECB and that this program is one based on, on creating stability, not on, on helping reduce debt. Is that the case or is, is this paving the way to what we've seen in you know, analysts beforehand talking about Greece having the right to buy uh, their debt back or perhaps the EFSF being used uh, to, to buy debt back. So is this a crisis measure or is, this a, uh, is there a debt reduction aspect to this as well? It can be both. 
can be uh, used also as a, a debt buyback uh, operation. Uh, but uh, this is not uh, the, the only aim uh, we can have in crisis situations. We can do what the central bank is doing, and we can uh, make also other operations in order to decrease the level of Greek, uh, the Greek debt, public debt. So uh, I think this is an, uh, an, uh, a tool that gives us more flexibility uh, to use. But we need, uh, for that, that kind of operations, of course, the first the signal of the European Central Bank. Uh, and they gave us the signal if uh, all uh, conditions are ready to go to, for that kind of operations. And we do have to do it in a mutual agreement with our member states. Thank you. Yes, sir. Faisal Islam, Channel 4 News, uh, England. Can I just check um, that the maturity on Greek EFSF loans seems to go up to 30 years plus a 10-year grace period? That's 40, my maths. Um, is that not a default, temporary or selective? And also, what happens to the interest rates on bilateral loans? Do they also go down by two and a half percentage points? Mr. Barroso? Yes, uh, the conclusions say the following. We have decided to lend on the maturity of future EFSF loans to Greece to the maximum extent possible from the current 7.5 years to a minimum of 15 years and up to 30 years with a grace period of 10 years. I think this is extremely important to, of course, um, ensure the debt sustainability of uh, Greece. At the same time, um, we also decided to extend substantially the maturities of the existing Greek facility. That was what was decided for the programs, for the, the loans already uh, uh, approved. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your attention. Good night.